because if we look at data in modern romance, it's a lot of it, especially I'm 27, you're 23, right? A lot of it is dating app based, you know? And there's a stat that Indian men and black women are the lowest swiped upon people on dating apps. So building an aesthetic physique is the most important thing for someone, for an Indian man, not only in the Western world, but also all over all over the world, in India itself, you know? And not only that, um, it can, I work at the biggest finance firm in the world. That's my day job. And I can tell you, the confidence that I have when I present myself to my executive director, when I shake their hands, when, um, you know, when I walk around at, in my office, you know, it comes from the physical fitness and it comes from that self image that I've created for myself. And I have videos of what I used to look like as a kid in high school, in college, and it just makes a league of difference. So you are on a mission to basically change the very fabric of existence for an Indian man. It, it applies to all parts of society. You know, it applies to dating. It applies to business. It applies to a day job. It applies to family. Like that's the next quest I think both of us are going to be on. It's like how to create a family. Your woman will re respond to you and respect you so much more if you have an aesthetic physique my the girl i started dating she chose me she's a very attractive girl five seven you know all the attractive markers she chose one guy in the last two years on her bumble that she wanted to date and that was me and i was like what did you like about me he's like you're tall and built that was the first thing she noticed and the second thing about david goggins dude uh when i was at my lowest point during covid uh, i just graduated college my parents moved to louisiana right i was working a remote job as a developer i was fat out of shape i was eating pizza every day and at my lowest point i didn't have a bed and i separated from my parents because i was going through some familial problems the one thing that got me through life and gave me some amount of resiliency was David Goggins' podcast. So I would highly recommend Can't Hurt Me, or sorry, his audiobooks, Can't Hurt Me and uh, the, the second uh, Never book. Finished. Never Finished, right. And um, I was at a point where I was working a job I hated, living in a city I hated, uh, didn't have a sense of purpose, didn't have a bed. I was just trying to save money, that like Indian mentality. But I started working out, listening to Goggins every night. And then I moved to Seattle, uh, quit my job, took a 50% pay cut. I was making 100K. I, I, I got a job that was 50K, went to Seattle, built my body slowly. And at that point, I'd never had a girlfriend at age 24. Just started leveling up, hitting the gym every day. Got my dream job now at JP Morgan Chase, you know, and got a girlfriend at the time, built you know, a social circle. So the mission that you're on, it's going to really change people's lives if they they listen to you, you know? So 100% yeah. bro, respect. You know what, bro? Like, these guys fucking deserve it. Man. Facts. Like, every man deserves that feeling of being proud of themselves. 100%. Every man deserves that, like, internal confidence where they stand up tall with their shoulders down and back. Yeah. and they walk into a room and they don't feel like everyone is judging them. Right. And they don't, you know, have that like weird expression on their face because they're just so socially inept because right. no one has ever even wanted to even look at them. Right. These men deserve to have friends. They deserve to have girlfriends. They deserve to have self-confidence and self-worth. They deserve to have a family, a good job, to be able to, like you said, to be able to walk up to their boss, look that man in the eye and shake his hand with a firm handshake. Now, all of a sudden your boss is respecting you and considering you for another pay raise or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get that if you have your shoulders hunched, talk like you're fucking, yeah. like you're self-conscious and right. you, even though you did great work, you're like, oh, but like, oh, but, but, you know, like yeah. you, you're not <laughs> confident in what you're doing. Yeah. Hundred um, percent, yeah. And so there's a concept. Sorry, uh, there's a concept that David Goggins said: being the one of one in a crowd. You know, where like he was the only African American man in the Navy SEAL and a bunch of white people. You know, and a lot of Indian men will face this, especially as they foray into the Western world. I remember in high school, I was the only brown kid, and I walked up 
and the dudes were like oh you're like apu from simpsons right like you're from you're uh the dude from big bang theory right you need alcohol to talk to women right society has fucked our image you know in mainstream media and this is how we are perceived fast forward to about a few months ago i go to this networking event right at this point i'm single and there's a belgian man there's a uh you know an english man there's like a bunch of hot american women they're like there's a like bunch of different people my best friend is korean i walk up to them and i speak with charisma like you said have my shoulders back have i just worked out so i'm like endorphined out you know i speak to them with so much charisma and there's this other guy indian brown dude you know from india he's like hello what is your name you know and like it's not the accent it's the confidence and he shakes everyone's hand and then the belgium dude's like hey bro like like you have so much more charisma than this guy but you're both indian i'm like there we go it's it's a mind shit it's a mindset you know so yeah at the end of the 100%. day we're all human exactly we all have the same thing going on underneath the color of our skin definitely and we are just a product of all of the inputs that we've had over our life yeah so but that puts so much power in your hands because you have the power to control your inputs if you choose to yeah. right you can always choose to be like I am going to consume this content. I'm going to talk to these people. I'm going to write these. I'm going to create my own fucking inputs and write things in my whatever. I'm going to put papers mm-hmm. on my wall. Right. Read these books. Mm-hmm. That shapes who you are. Beautifully said. Definitely. And I think you and I we have a common mentor who has given us some of these ideas and um would you say that's Hamza and David Goggins and you know the putting pictures on the wall that's something Hamza did right uh the journaling the habit tracking those are some aspects of stoicism which I later resonated with which my channel is based on and I realized Hamza was doing a lot of these things so that kind of brings to a transition onto one of the things I said what made you resonate with uh someone like Hamza and his content and what message do you bring from him to be the Hamza for a lot of different people you know well you know what i so many singular events happened in my life for me to have heard that message got you right if and, and if any one of those things had gone differently i don't know if i would have watched his content mm-hmm. could have like for i'll give you an example in high school i was already jacked you know mm-hmm. football player athletic but i just didn't have the confidence there was girls who were clearly into me and i could have been dating and all that but it just it didn't work right so if i if i already had the confidence as a young man in high school and i was already like getting with girls and all of those things maybe i wouldn't have watched because a huge part of hamza he, i mean you know giving you the confidence of girls like that's how he roped all of us in it was right. about dating and then he taught us self improvement yes but I, he caught me at a really really low point in my life where because i started university when i was 18 and then the pandemic happened and i took a break for 2 years i was not in university and i was doing other things i was working as a ski instructor i was a <laughs> surf bum in la <laughs> by all means having a good time i yeah. skied every single day lived in the mountains had great friends but after those 2 years i went back to university and It's a huge culture difference going from the middle of buttfuck nowhere in the mountains of California going to Dallas, Texas. Right? right? I went from like a a bummy kind of like granola area to going to like everyone is proper and buttoned up and preppy and either you're going to be a finance bro or a finance bro. Like there's no option, right? Either you're working at JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley or right. either you're Goldman. doing oil and gas in Houston or you're going to New York. Like that is the environment that I am in right now. Got you. Interesting. So I go there and I'm like I come here like <laughs> I just felt I felt so out of place. I didn't know how to make friends anymore. I I couldn't relate to these people. I was used to going skiing every day and me and my boys would just go skiing and smoke weed and have a fun time. Yeah. Now I'm here it's like these guys are talking about internships and going to like nightclubs and 
you know, there's doing that whole thing. Like I didn't have experience with any of this. Mm -hmm. Then, so what happened was that I was like, I started feeling lonely and depressed. I wasn't lifting as hard. I wasn't, I wasn't talking to people. So I would just go home at two, three o'clock when school ended and I would just smoke a bunch of weed. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was in one of those times where I was really high and Hamza pop, popped up on my YouTube feed. I would just scroll on social media and I watched it and I was like, Hey, well, well, this guy, this guy is like, Bro, I relate to this guy. Can I imagine what you saw, what your high brain saw? You were like watching. He's like, Jeffrey smokes weed all the time. Adonis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, and I watched that. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, this guy's Pakistani. Like, oh, even yeah. cooler. And I think a lot of brown guys resonated with him because you know he is brown. Mm -hmm. we had our the same genetics. You know, we all think our genetics are terrible, which they aren't. But you know, yeah. we all think so. So we, like, wow, this guy who had bad genetics just like me did all of these things, and now he's teaching me how to do it. Oh, this seems like it would work. Yeah. But then, you know, that journey was up and down, right? Uh, right around when I got into him, he made that video where he's like, I fulfilled my purpose and he stopped uploading videos. When was that? Was that after his girlfriend or before? No, 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 2022. So 2022, Hamza stopped uploading. Oh, wow. okay. Gotcha. Three weeks later, he started, but it wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. I stopped watching him because of that. So there's like a solid three, four month period where I'm watching his videos every day. I stop smoking weed. I stop watching porn. I go home for winter break and I'm actually cold approaching girls and getting dates. Nice. And this was crazy. Like I'm getting dates. I'm having success with these dates. Like all types of shit's happening. I go back to school and that begins the slow decline again, mm. right? Because I wasn't watching him and he, <laughs> It was more like his influence that was getting me to do these things rather than actually me taking control of my life. Mm -hmm. And then months and months later, I, you know, I, I grapple with the self-improvement things that go on and off, on and off, but I didn't have the mental strength to really do it. But you know, I'm in the gym and I'm getting jacked and th that stuff is going well. Like I'm yeah. fucking, I walk into that gym and everyone knows who I am. They all look at me, mm -hmm. they all respect me. I know everyone in there. So I, I had that going for me, but I was still- So would you say that's the one thing that was working for you, the fitness, when everything else was crumbling or like everything wasn't sure? Okay. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean like, and because of fitness, I had a social life. Gotcha. Because you know, I, I learned to, I learned to talk to people mm -hmm. and I was able to do that. Um, I could go to the gym and there's a hundred people in there and I know 65 of them, right? So yeah, bro. And let me tell you one thing, the, another aspect of why I resonated with you, you seem like a pretty charismatic dude. Like you had that, like, I don't know it was Kelly, but you had that like surfer accent and you, you still trade, stay true to the brown shit, you know, like you let your Punjabi side out, but you should appreciate the charisma you have, you know, that's what appealed to me. Like, obviously it was the, you have a six pack. That's what I don't, you know, and like that stood out as well but you have a lot of base charisma and the way you talk it's very relatable so that's why i wanted to interview you you know mm. but but yeah you were saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> i think I'm what the boy is like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you bro thank you <laughs> appreciate you <laughs> um yeah i i had the gym going for me and that helped because dude to be honest i started lifting when i was 14. Right. So if I'm 22 and I, like, I'm not lifting, like there's bigger problems there. Right. I should, Definitely. I should have that down by that point. Right. Um, so then I don't know what happened, but I found his videos again. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't as low as I was before because I had friends and I could talk to girls somewhat. But at the end of the day, you know what the real problem that never was solved was the internal self belief i lacked the self-confidence no matter how many of the external things were going well for me sometimes i just like didn't feel confident i still question myself when clearly people were like damn that guy looks good that guy is awesome or whatever i'd be in an environment and get anxiety like heart beating out of my chest and i couldn't speak and i didn't know why um and then i saw his videos again and 